Now, I, I hollered at my boy Bobby A from PJ because he knew uh, G Blank Donut from Flesh Town Mafia. So he said that, you know, some of the episodes, you know, not all of them, but some of the episodes may have been, you know, uh, you know, not really. It's well, not. Let me let me just answer. Let me just answer that question for you. All right, welcome and welcome back to S. Wiggins TV. You already know, it's your host, Worldwide Wiggins. And man, 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 we got a special guest in the booth, in the building, man. You know what I'm saying? Somebody I grew up watching. Somebody that definitely inspired me. You feel me? Because the people y'all think inspired me is not the ones. It's two people. And this brother right here is definitely one of them. We talk about somebody who's on the forefront man somebody who's on the front lines going to these hoods man and really pushing for peace and really a community activist not just talking because a lot of stuff just be for you feel me for for the youtube and for instagram and look good you feel me i really watch this brother you know do things that really bro if it wasn't for this brother right here wouldn't be no s wiggins tv bro so please give it up for Malik Spellman. What's the deal, Harvey? How you feeling? Peace, black man. How you feel today, man? I'm cool. I'm cool, man. It's a pleasure to have you on here, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You know, your show is Save More Lives and a Cure for Cancer, you know, and I'm just a reflection of you and your servant when it comes to anything that's human or black related. So I'm just here to be a servant and see if there's any way that we can save one black person, man, if nothing else, man. Man, thank you, man. That's I can't believe I, I'm hearing this from you, man. Thank you, man. Uh, no doubt, man. I appreciate you more, black man. Always know that. For sure. Malik, what part of L.A. Yeah. did you grow up in? Well, I was, I was born and reared in New York City because, you know, I wasn't raised anyway. You raised chickens and cows and dogs. But I was reared in New York, and I came out here when I was 15 years old because it was too cold in New York, and I was homeless, and off and you know everything was real ugly for me you know so coming up in that environment man i became a wanderer of the earth man and i wind up out here in south central los angeles 73rd and broadway wow i i, I didn't know that man how, how were you welcomed when you came here well to la how, how did you adapt well Adaptation was relatively easy, but it was strange, you know, due to the fact that before I got to L.A., I had a pit stop over uh, some guy's house that was a friend of the guy was traveling with a Panamanian dude, and the brother was stabbed up on, you know, on the couch and stuff from some incident that took place. So long story short, before I left, I was like, yo, man, you know, um, you got your mom. He got a lot of jury on, you know, a brother named White Boy Buddy, a good friend of mine. I always try to keep his existence alive for those that's listening. And then, you know, he mumbled under the sedation of them drugs they had him on. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm good. Consequently, I get to L.A. off the Greyhound, downtown L.A. And the uh, I took a cab. I said, man, take me to the black community. And he drove me all the way from downtown L.A., which is, I think it was Greyhound back then, the trailways, one or the other on Alameda Central or something. I have to Alameda. And uh, he dropped me off on 73rd and Broadway and the dude pulled off. And I was like, he didn't accept the fare. And then he was like, good luck. When he drove off, I stood there for a minute with a leather suit on, hot, you know, coming from New York fashion, out the game. And long story short, a brother walked up to me like, man, he wanted to buy some cocaine, but the guy I was with, I didn't know he had cocaine. He had stolen from somebody. I never knew, I don't steal from black people. And he gave it to him. Then the next day, dude found us. He's like, man, y'all from New York. And I was like, what you mean? He's like, man, this dope ain't from out here. And then the way he was dressed. <laughs> Consequently, when he came back the second time, he said, man, my brother want to meet you. My brother said for you to come up to his house. I said, your brother? I don't know your brother. I don't even know nobody out here. I ain't been out here a week. And then I went over there to meet the dude. This is how karma worked. It was the dude that was on the couch that was stabbed up. 
and he trusted me. He said, man, I respect you and I love you. What a God coincidence. And that's the God, honest truth. That's exactly how my life began. And from that point on, it was hell on earth because he was the uh, king of manufacturing PCP and I was his right hand man. I had never seen palm trees, houses, and, and, and drug dealers like that and, and just gang violence. But it was interesting because in New York, we grew up in real poverty, 30 story buildings, 10 generations deep. So to see the difference in New York and LA, coming out of your God body, not eating pork, you know, with this thing with Prince and none of them dudes and, uh, <laughs> What was his name? Uh, Morris Day. I was in the Grandmaster Flash. DJ Bam Bader. Like that, you know. Hot shit. So it was a difference, man. It was, it was cultural shock in a sense, but it was comforting. Had nowhere to live or nothing. I was just here one. All right. All right. I dig it. So you got... It, you, you, you were involved in a, a life-changing show called The Peacemaker. How did you... How did you get approached for that? How did you end up... How did you get that show? How did you end up doing that? Well, that's a great question. Um, that's great journalism 101. Uh, I was already doing this stuff in the streets with Tony Bogart, the brothers and sisters in Watts, you know, Doe, my partner, my right-hand man, crying me in this peace thing, you know, tie stick from the Nickerson Garden. Uh, Bo Taylor came later on, uh, then Cat hang out. Ice T. I had met Ice T because I, when the truce was going down, I went and hunted Ice T down. Like, man, yo, man, come get down with the streets with this peace thing. And I found him down at the sports arena or something. And the brother was down to earth, you know, he gave me a real number. I think that's the first time I ever went to a real rapper's house. He had a bomb house in the hills in Hollywood. <laughs> bomb closet full of fly gear, beautiful family. So uh, he was like, yo, man, you know, after we did the piece, then Tony got killed. And then they had me doing the, the news reporter thing for Fox 11 News here in L.A. called the show called Straight from the Streets, for those that are old enough to remember. And then one day Ice got at me like, yo, man, you know, um, I want to do a show called America's Other Civil War. And then he set up a meeting with his production company, went in there. And I think he showed him the tape of me doing something in the streets. And consequently, he's like, yo, Ice. And it's just paraphrasing, yo, know, like it wouldn't look right for you jumping out of a road with these niggas in the streets like that. <laughs> what about that right there? And then they the ones named me Peacemaker. So they shot five segments. Uh, it was the number one rated show on TV for them five days. It came on. It was, the ratings was high. No point for his whole network. Because black people and other people supported it. And consequently... Uh, George Hinojos has overspent the budget so there's no more shows uh, and, uh, know, the bottom line is black unity is a crime you know mm -hmm. right 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 now I, I hollered at my boy Bobby A from PJ and uh, he said that cause he knew uh, G Blank Donut from Flush Town Mafia so he said that you know some of the episodes, you know, not all of them, but some of the episodes may have been, you know, uh, you know, not really. It's well, not. Let me let me just answer. Let me just answer that question for you. A lot of the things, the discrepancy, the discrepancies were real, no doubt about that. Anybody can see that if you've been in the streets of California. Second of all, some of the things that was reenacted was things like me, what do you do in the morning, Malik? You get up, you get in your car, you travel over there. Oh, so. And then some of the discrepancies had to be in the process. Kind of strategically, because remember, a lot of these people didn't get along at all. And a couple of the episodes was 100% raw, like the Playboys and the uh, Mansfield unfortunate situation, which all of them are unfortunate. The one yeah. with the uh, Gardena brothers and the other little uh, a tribe that they were going up against. So some of the reenactments were, were done in a sense like it was part of the peace process in a sense because it had an involvement that required people to conduct themselves in such a way that it was normal everyday life but for the most part the discrepancies was 100% real and was you know with, like, with the brothers from um, that did the one that you just mentioned they were a little more in tune to the, to the aspects of, of how production worked so they have a different perspective on it, but the discrepancies was 100% real. But at some point, anything in television 
whether it's a docu-series or docu-follow, some things either have to be reenacted or it has to be added into it as an ingredient. But the discrepancies, as I said, was 100% real. There's no doubt about that. That's what was important to me and perhaps the audience as well. For sure, for sure. Sure. All right. uh, Just, you know, uh, just, just off the top of the dome, in your perspective, what was your favorite episode out of the five? Like, which, well, which one? Um, definitely the PJs, because I was more comfortable there after working with Tony Bogart. All of them were my favorites. But if I was a proud parent, I'd say the one that I did in Inglewood was very important because of how serious the situation was and the outcome that those brothers put together on that. Now, those were two different brothers from the same uh, family that was from two different tribes. So it wasn't so much as to, you know, uh, which one was the favorite, but I believe working with the Fudge Towns and the PJs was good. I really liked the little brother that was on there named um, Rest in Peace. We had some really good conversation. I can't remember his name, but he was a really good person, man. He just subjected to that life that was served to all of us, and mostly them, not me. But uh, that's a good question, man. You put me on the spot with that one. 